Hi everyone watching, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today we're going to be talking about sex addictions, yay! But actually seriously guys, it's not a funny topic, it's not cool, it's not fun. For some people it's, a, it's actually a real serious problem that they just can't get enough of sex and they always need to be having sex, you know, when they're, when they're at work, if they have a break, you know, they don't even have time to fit in food or lunch. Because they're too busy just ra racing off to the toilet to masturbate profusely or to find a, a potential mate within the 30 minutes of a lot of time they have. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't really done too much reading and research into sex addiction as a whole, but I think I can touch on one aspect um, just that I've, you know, determined uh, through meditation and contemplation. I can discuss one aspect now with. I think why some people might be addicted to sex. So let's let's get all Freudian and let's go back to the very beginning to impressions, to first impressions, because as they say, first impressions last a lifetime, right? First impressions last a lifetime. Now, some of this is from my PAC, Transactional Analysis Talk, which is another segment. I'm not gonna go there now. But uh, if you want some more information on this, you can watch that segment. So, first impressions. Think about when you're in the womb, right, of your mother. And, you know, it's a very warm, secure place. You know, there's no light. It's pure darkness. And you are at one with your mother. There's a complete sense of unity. And, it, you know, it's very soft and, like I said, warm. And, and there's, there's nothing abrasive about it, you know. And you're there for a number of months. Um, until you're finally ejected, right, into this, this world of sensory overload and light, which is harsh on the eyes, and uh, all these loud noises, and you find yourself separate from your mother. There's no longer that sense of unity, and you, find, you find yourself, in a sense, falling, or at least you, you are able to conceive of the idea of falling, and everything is abrasive and rough, loud, Basically, it's fucking scary as fuck, right? Considering you just came from a place where you felt one with someone, at one with someone, you felt that unity, that safety, that peace and comfort, and now you're, in a sense, shot out and separate and alone and cold and falling and fearful. This is the first impression that you experience coming out of the womb into the real world. And first impressions last a lifetime. In my PSC talk, I talk about why most people in the world, or at least everyone, starts off with the I'm not okay, you're okay disposition. Meaning that, you know, they're fearful and they look up to the mother or the father as the person which is okay because they're the ones that take the child back into their arms and provide that nourishment and that sense of safety and reconnection that the child really needs to experience after they're born. It's a scary thing being thrown out and feeling separate and alone when everything you have known is being one with your mother and being safe and at a peace and comfort. So that's why stroking is very important, which means it's basically physically giving your child attention and just nourishing your child and showing him or her love, you know, and making her feel like she's coming back or he's coming back to that place of connectedness, make, reassuring them that they're not alone, you know. A lot of people don't get such nourishment, so they end up changing from I'm not okay, you're okay, to I'm not okay, you're not okay. And then you've got the sociopaths and whatnot, but that's another talk. This is about sex addiction, and this is the point. And this is where this PAC, parent, adult, child, transactional analysis, which is a psychology thing, uh, comes into it. It's basically, I think we all start off with a sense of unity, then we're ejected into a world of fear, as I've elaborated on. And then after that, especially if we don't receive the nourishment we need, I think some people, they can only really find that sense of reconnection and that sense of being one and in unity and safe and comfort, you know, when, when they are having sex, when they're connecting with someone on that deeply intimate level, you know, and maybe it does take them back to like, a Freudian time if they ever were breastfed, you know? And I'm taking, if these people didn't receive adequate attention as children, then, you know, 
whether they were abused or not, that just makes things worse. But even if they were neglected and they weren't given emotional and physical nourishment and affection, then maybe eventually when they do start growing up and they do end up having sex and have a sex a few times, it's like it's so overwhelming, that sense of relief and satisfaction and gratification, you know, because they've never really felt that before. It's not even normal at all to receive any kind of affection. They never learnt it in childhood. So as an adult, you know, when they do feel those, those emotions with people and physical gratification, it can be overwhelming, you know, and it can become addictive for these kind of people, I think. So I think that's one aspect of some people who may suffer from sex addiction is that maybe they were ignored a lot as a child and didn't really receive too much affection and they've just become addicted to this wonderful feeling that they don't really know. And in a sense, it's like filled their void, you know? I, I find that a lot of people that do need to have sex all the time in relationships where that is a priority over everything else, generally there's some kind of void, you know? Something that they're lacking on a deep level, emotionally, or physically, and when they have sex, even if it's not love making, but just fucking, it still takes them back to the womb. And in this way, you could say that some people, when having sex, are actually trying to fuck their way back to the womb. You know what I'm saying? Actually trying to return to that place, back where they came from, where everything was secure and comfortable, and where they were one, and where they felt connected and not alone. You know? Keeping in mind when you're having sex, it also allows you the bliss and the amazing opportunity to forget about yourself and your sense of self, to displace your sense of self and to become lost in a feeling, to be lost in a feeling. And that could be like salvation for some people, you know, some people that dread being them, just being themselves, that dread having to live within their own skin. You know, a moment away, you know, having sex with somebody else, that moment away from themselves and that moment lost in a feeling can be very addicted and it can, be, it can seem therapeutic but it can also if taken to excess cause a lot of problems so that's just one aspect and I'm sure there's there might be other things that come into it maybe with conditioning and with genes um, maybe there's some certain you know just the chemistry of people why they are the way that they are but uh, this is just one aspect I think that people that are lacking especially people that like I said were ignored or neglected or even abused, not didn't really receive the nourishment they needed, and people that don't really find much satisfaction in life, you know? Maybe they were never taught as a child how to engage with different possibilities in life, how to pursue different possibilities. They were raised very simply with simple meager means, and so they never really, you know, do much with their time. They never really feel motivated or compelled to do anything. But sooner or later, eventually, usually everyone ends up having sex one way or another. And it's a little bit easier. It's not something you really have to... I mean, you still got to get out there and, and, in a sense, seek it out. But you don't really have to try some hard. Sooner or later, everybody slips into that hole. You know what I'm saying? And when they do, it can be a very delightful hole to slip in. And it might be the only thing that some really boring people, unmotivated, maybe depressed people, be the only hole that they will sink into. And think, oh wow, this is fun. This is a great way to pass time. So a lot of time it's out of boredom and people rely on that as the ultimate fix because they don't really know anything else and it becomes an addiction. You know, to the point where everything else is boring and pale in comparison to sex because it just feels so amazing. Anyway, that's my thoughts on all of that today. I think that the healthy idea of what to do in the resolution, obviously, counseling helps and I know there's a lot of views on counseling and counselors not being very good and they've got a really bad rep. But really, it depends on the counselor. Sure, you get some that follow the textbook. They don't really get their heart involved. They don't really appreciate the unique context of each individual. And they don't treat sensitively each person the way that they need to be treated. So there is a bad rap for some. But there are some out there that are really good at what they do. They still actually give a shit. It's not just by the book and to make a buck. You know, and they can help just by talking through these issues of the past and helping you become aware and understand where your current motivations are coming from and why your current lack of motivation, what all that is due to, you know? And helping you find substitutes 
for instead of having to get your fix or your energy this way through sex, you can find it through other means. You know, maybe sport or some activity that you enjoyed as a kid or something which inspired you that you saw on TV, saw a friend do or heard of a friend doing, but you never actually did it yourself, you know? By giving new things a go, you might discover that there are some things that are just as good, if not more exhilarating and fulfilling on a deeper level than sex. So I think talking with uh, professionals on the matter that know their business, who actually listen to you is a very good step in making progress. And I'm not, I don't know if abstinence would really help. It might just inflame the situation. I'm pretty sure it's just like anything you're trying to quit or cut down, you know, you gotta moderate it and gradually drop, you know? And as you're gradually dropping, you gotta find substitutions, you gotta find something else, some other activities to take up your time in place of that which you are replacing, you know? So there's maybe another suggestion, is to find things to do, gradually drop down the amount of sex you're having, and replace it with more rewarding activities or just as just as fulfilling activities. And yeah, that's the food for, for thoughts on, on that subject. Like I said, there's more details on uh, all, a lot of that stuff with um, the PAC, Transactional Analysis video, so you can check that out. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with all your friends, and I'll catch you later. So yeah, have fun guys, and keep fucking around. Just remember, there's more to life than that. Don't make it your, you know, everything. Cheers.